Hey everybody, Andrew Zimmern here. This is my colleague and friend, J.P. Samuelson, the culinary director of Passport Hospitality, our little food and beverage company. Uh, and this is uh, something that we have been really excited about, which is as yet to be named seaweed tasting experience. Hopefully we're gonna be doing more with this thing. Uh, and I, innocent until proven guilty third party. Right? True, true you don't story. know what we're doing. Don't. Never well, you don't, we're tasting the seaweed. seaweed. We're tasting right. the seaweed. Uh, but he, here is the here is the long and the short of it. Speaking for the two of us and for our company, we really believe in the power of aquaculture. Sea vegetables are extremely underrated. We need to figure out ways to feed a hungry planet. This is a way you can vote with your plate. And for every ounce of sea vegetable that you put in your body per year, that's another ounce of, say, a, uh, a CAFO-raised animal that you don't need to put into your body. So net-net, eating sea vegetables is good for you. And you like seaweed. I do. You do like seaweed. So what we, what we have here is our, our friend Michael, the founder and the big head honcho of Monterey Bay Seaweeds, plural. And you can learn more about them at Monterey Bay Seaweeds, plural, dot com. Sent us one, two, three, four, five different types of seaweed. We're going to show each of them uh, to you one by one, along with instructions about how to store and maintain them. So these came fresh in vacuum sealed uh, bags with the instruction to take the two cups of salt that we were given, dissolve it in two gallons of cold water. I'm gonna do the first one here. So we did that. And then you can then just store the seaweed. I just threw a few ounces in there. But you essentially store the seaweed in salted water, right? So super, super easy and then it lasts for quite a long time and you can season it with this salt water, but we're gonna do some other fun things uh, to it as well. I'm just adding, this is a big, this is a big bag. So I wanna make sure that we get that all in there. This right here is dulce. Now this is a very popular seaweed in dried and fresh uh, form. Let me get a fork here for you. Are you, uh, have you tried this kind of seaweed before? I have. Now, most recently in Hawaii. Most recently, in, well, you were just there this yes. last year, and the last time I had fresh dulce of this quality was in Hawaii at a sea urchin farm. Because do you know who likes to eat Ooh. dulce more than any other animal on planet Earth? No, but you're gonna tell me. Sea urchins. And now you and me. Exactly. So, what do you think? Ooh, that's delicious. Great texture. Great texture. Yep. You can cook this. You can dry it. It's a little, I, I nibbled a little earlier because I wanted to see how strong the brine was and what now, while this contributes freshness. Well, you cheated. To it. No, I just wanted to see so that you had a, I didn't want to throw something too salty into your mouth. But you would dry this on a towel, come sa, mm. right? Because we have a lot of residual salt water on there. Correct. And what I have here is mm. I have, Two very simple sauces. After you've tasted it plain, we can taste it with a sauce. All right. This right here is just a little bit of sesame oil, uh, soy sauce, and lemon juice. Just a very standard combination. You can blot. There's a towel for blotting. I'm using a uh, bluegrass uh, soy sauce.com soy sauce, one of my favorites. And it's, you know, it's strong sauce. You don't need a lot. Let it drip off. Wow. Just an idea of what the mm. dulce could do in a salad or something like that. I'm gonna go into a slightly stronger sauce, one of my favorite new sauces that I've tried on the marketplace. It's called cham. What I like about it, I make nuoc cham and all kinds of different Vietnamese sauces all the time at home. Just a lot of other people don't have the, all the ingredients to do it. They make a spicy and a standard. You're gonna love that. Oh, that is delicious. Takes the seaweed in a whole other direction. And the seaweed has a, kind of stands up to both. Agreed. Great vehicle. Great vehicle. Right. That's the Dulce. Okay, you ready for the next one? I am. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. So I have a question for you too. Yes. So on the 
that never eats seaweed? Like, what would be how could a Spaniard Spaniard never eat seaweed? <laughs> Who is? You're surrounded by water. Yeah, but what would your recommendation be for someone that has never eaten it before? Like, how should they eat it? Oh, she's being so, hypothetical. She's okay. being hypothetical. Got it. You can, you can. This is first of all, you you work out like seven hours a day, so this is incredibly healthy for you. It's in super dense and nutritious. You can put it in salads. You can put it in shakes. You can do it and use it in stir fries. Just throw it in at the last minute Absolutely. and put a little bit of heat on there. When we get to the bull's kelp, I think we have some really cool ideas for you. But any place that you would use a lettuce, a green, a leafy green, like a spinach or a chard, something like that, you can do uh, with uh, seaweeds. The other thing that I really love to do is cold soups as an addition and uh, fresh un for those who are into raw foods that there's whole movement uh, fresh pestos so imagine a sauce for raw vegetable treatment raw fish stuff like that all right I gave this a little smush this is this is sea lettuce which comes in long it attaches to rocks and grows in the Pacific Northwest I know because I've harvested this ad nauseum. Um, and I'm just, again, blotting on a towel just to remove that extra salt water that it's in. I'm gonna take a bite of it first. I love this stuff. I can eat this all day long. It's briny. It wow. reminds me of clams. It does. It's Correct. gonna stand up to that cham sauce. Mm. So oh. different than the also too. So different. Right? Try. Try this. It's just really briny and intense. Mm. And I think anyone who's been swimming around the Pacific Northwest or the, quite frankly the Northeast because there's a variant of this that grows uh, up in the uh, Northeastern uh, part of our country and into Canada. It's so good. Oh Delicious. my gosh. If you were swimming in the Pacific Northwest, you might be briny and intense as well. I <laughs> never do videos with your friends, but you are right. right? You are right. Um, mm. I foraged this in Vancouver Harbor. I could see laying that out, wrapping fish like a monkfish, whitefish in that. Correct. It's like, fantastic. Right? Fantastic. Yeah. Great. 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 I also, to be honest with you, flash sautéing this. Ooh. And and just uh, you know next to the fish too. Absolutely. Another great. I mean this this yep. stuff performs like uh, a tastier spinach. Agreed. Brown butter spinach. Brown there butter. Ah, oh, brown butter spinach. All right. Now this one is familiar, I think, to lots of people. Ogo is a very common uh, seaweed in Japanese restaurants, and even when. You say, oh, I don't eat seaweed in Japanese restaurants. If you have those seaweed salads that come with it, Correct. Uh, it that come in a lot of Japanese, you've eaten both the uh, sea lettuce and the ogo, but you will recognize the ogo mostly as the thing that hardcore sushi bar fanatics eat and everyone else doesn't eat because a little bundle of it comes on your, uh, on your plate when they make your little sashimi presentation. They mm. lean fish against it. And I love it. Crispy texture like celery. Agreed. Sweet on the finish. To me, it has that more distinctive seaweed flavor. Yeah. Right? Like you would, I think most people would associate this with uh, that flavor profile with the seaweed salad you might get in a pokey. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm hmm. That electric green one. Yep, exactly. What do you call that fake electric green seaweed salad? I don't know. Neon. Uh... The neon green one. You know yeah, what we're green. talking about. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, so, so good. Very you like good. that one? I do. I love, I love them all. Yeah. Right? Like, so far. So good point. So far. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. All right. The Ogo. Mm. Um, this I have been so excited about since it came in because. Um, I, I as well. Bull kelp is a, an amazing plant. Now, I have had this pickled in Alaska and in Vancouver. Um, I have forged this. Let me just knock that down. I have forged for this myself. Um, I have gotten entangled 
uh, in Northern California, uh, diving for abalone in huge forests of bull kelp where the, the central core is, you can barely get your hand around and it grows 30, 40 feet up from the forest, uh, from the seafloor. The seals love to play in there. And as I'm diving there, true story, shooting an episode of Bizarre Foods, the dive guide says, yeah, we lost a good friend last week here. I was like, here, you mean like Northern California? He goes, no, no, this bay in this kelp bed, a great white shark attacked wow. and killed someone. Uh, it's like six, seven years ago. And I, I literally, the next thing I knew I was on shore. I was like, I, I Michael Phelps it like. I bet you did. Yeah, because I was not. Right. No, no. That's... Although it would have made good television. Would have made... <laughs> Thank you. It would have. So you can see here... Wow. The bull kelp. That's and beautiful. And this is a right? baby like... one, right? It has the... Hence the bull... Because it looks like a bull's tail, right? So it's got the ball. It's got the tail. And then it has these ribbons. And those ribbons are pretty fibrous, but also tender at the same time and the reason that i'm cutting it like this is so that we can taste different pieces of it when it's more mature you have to pickle it or cook it because it's too thick it's right. too fine right i mean it gets really thick but like that's a couple of millimeters thick that's beautiful and tender. gorgeous so different than the other ones really mild right yep absolutely like if you almost buttery it is buttery agreed Almost buttery. Here, have another slice of that. And then we're going to split uh, the ball itself because texturally, mm. here, you take you take the Why, pretty end. You. You're welcome. It's how the, the little, that little ball at the end is hollow. What? Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Mmm. Crunchy. How delicious is that? That is delicious. And so different. Like I think everybody thinks seaweed is all going to taste like, you know, that have that similar profile. But, you know, the first one, like you said, sea urchin. It had a sea urchin uh, nose mm -hmm. to it, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you first cracked that uh -huh. open. Because the sea urchin tastes like dulcet. Right. Right. Chicken or the egg. Which one? Which I one think... Works? I think you hit the nail on the head, though. You assume they're all going to taste just like salt water. Yep, exactly. This does not taste if a that thing like salt water. Agreed. If you hadn't poured that sea, the salt water on it, right? I think mm -hmm. most people, if they ate that in a mix of vegetables, they wouldn't even guess that it was from the ocean. Probably. Spectacular. Right. And a tangle of these with the different flavor profiles, a wow. little bit of each, you could create some really fascinating uh, dishes mm. with this. Here comes my favorite one. The, the one I'm obsessed with that I'm so thrilled they're farm raising. This is a single uh, medium sized ball. I just like saying that. Yeah. It tastes the same as the other one. We'll leave that over. Well, you know what we're gonna. Let's... And so when you were saying like it, when you were in California, yep. how big were the, the largest ones then compared to this? The balls? Yeah. A uh, size of softballs or wow, bigger. Wow, that big. Yeah. So no wonder. Well, they were 30, 40 feet. Right. No wonder uh, the seals like playing it. Long, and, but it's, it is literally like a dense forest. And You're do swimming the seals through it. eat them? Uh, I believe they do. I believe they do. I know other animals do. Right, absolutely. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, I think the seals like it because the seals may actually take food there because they can hide in, in, the, the, sure, in absolutely. the seaweed. I got to talk to a biologist about... Our friend home. Michael probably knows. Probably knows exactly right. Um... But this, my friends, to me is one of the gold standards of sea vegetables. Uh, these are sea grapes. And um, I'm gonna pour a little of the brine in there. Um, maybe you can see it a little better. They're called sea grapes because. Look at that. They actually look like grapes. That's so pretty. It is pretty. It is, it's beautiful. They would make nice earrings. Ooh. <laughs> Or a Christmas ornament. Since we or a Christmas ornament. Now you grab that because here's what's going to happen. You're going to pluck off a section of it and eat. I'm just going to dab on there. Eat one. This 
is one of my favorite vegetables on planet Earth, earth farmed or ocean farmed. Mm. The pop. It's incredible. Now this to me is the briniest of all. Agreed. Especially when you get that kind of explosion with there. Like. However, I mean, flown through a warm pan for 30 seconds. Mm, and then nice. with, uh, imagine like a very simple uh, chive, an herb butter mm. sauce and piece of fish. Much in the same way that pousse pie, right, is used. Crazy, crazy good. Now here's the, here's the fun part. Dip it in the chum. Now, have you had this uh, all over the world? I would collect it out of the water in the Philippines. Ooh. Couldn't stop eating it. Mmm. Well, this is the thing. Night and day. Changes it completely. Uh, exactly. It's the citrus. It's the lime juice and the other citrus in the chom that, because it's also, it does. also citric acid in the chilies and stuff, takes that salty flavor and literally eliminates it. Yep. It's like a magic it trick. It is, You're, it is a magic trick. You Amazing. Need, do you need the stem? Well, you can't, I mean, there's small, it's, it's just like any other plant. Smaller, tender stems, yes. Bigger, right. thicker stems, no. Exactly. You can almost see how the central one, as we pulled off of it, you don't want to, but these little ones we have, that is just delicious. And if you have this on like an antipasti platter and people and told me, they wouldn't even know, right? Like, hey, just try that. How fun. Oh, well, what is that? How is fun. That, and actually, now that, now that you say that, imagine that with a roasted red pepper. Oh, that yeah, sort of absolutely. flavor. Absolutely. Like, oh, yeah. that Mediterranean thing. Because mm -hmm. like, uh, you're right. Everybody always thinks, oh, it's Asian. That's right. Japanese, like seaweed. Now, you smoke a lot of fish here. I do. You cure a lot of fish here. Oh. Some of these play really well with that. To your right. point, drying them, but like smoking these, oh my God, that would be incredible. Yeah. Could you imagine That's with your nice. sturgeon what this oh would do? Oh my God. Anyway, so here's the deal. Wow. Monterey Bay Seaweeds, plural.com. Go online there, uh, express your interest. We, we th It does nothing for us. We have no affiliation, except in trying to advance the idea that the more of this that you're eating, the better off our planet is. The broader your food choices are at the buffet table in your house, uh, the better off we're all going to be, our family, your family, everyone is going to be better off if we extend the parameters of our diet. And if we don't include sea vegetables, we're really wasting a very valuable resource. Absolutely, and what is most of the earth made up of? Water, that's exactly right. So anyway, we're gonna go figure out other fun things to do with these. Uh, please support our friends at Bourbon Barrel Foods, the folks who make this incredible soy sauce. Go to bluegrasssoysauce.com. Uh, it's exquisite. And uh, chomdippingsauce.com. C-H-A-M dippingsauce.com. It's fantastic. They have a spicy and a regular. You're going to absolutely love it. If you love Vietnamese food, you need a bottle of this uh, in your house as well. Did we leave anything on the table? Other than the seaweed. No, other than the fact that I'm glad I, we have the same shirt and had I worn it today, That's it true. would have been way too dorky. Yeah, it would All have right. been. Super. See you later.